Yo, yo, yo. What up, my peoples? What it do? What it do? Happy Thursday. Um, dude, we got uh, we got a day ahead of us here. We got video gaming news, and then we've got um, we got gameplay. So Fallout New Vegas, we're uh, on the Lonesome Road DLC, and then we've got uh, the Developer Direct Showcase out of Xbox. So um, we're gonna watch that to end the stream today. I don't have a lot of expectations there, but um, there's some stuff that uh, I am uh, hoping to see and hoping to um, maybe get some positive vibes out of anyway. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Um, it'll be fun to watch together, anyways. So um, it's always good to stay current on what's coming up in the uh, in the industry, and this will be a good. It's the first real big kind of showcase as to what. Uh, you know some of the you know major developers will be bringing to us for the year and stuff and so um it'll be cool man we'll watch it today we'll have some fun and play games before that and uh, we can't get to any of that content without doing video gaming news and we got to catch up from being um not live and not doing the news yesterday so let's set our custom date range for the past two days let's get in here and see what we've got let's go Ah, love that Java. Excuse me, what? Ubisoft just introduced a game that came out six years ago? That sounds very Ubisoft-esque, uh, you know? We've already talked about this, dude. We've talked about this already, yeah. Looks like there's an Until Dawn video game movie in the works. Big surprise. We've already talked about this as well. Let's see what else we have. Yo, check it out. Check it out. It's a study, a scientific study that has proven violent video games do not diminish empathy. Interesting. How about that? Hmm. How about that? To be fair, I'm not diving into this, but look, man, there have been so many studies. What up, dog? What's up, ferret? Maybe, I mean, pole, pole dog? I think that's what you guys are referred to, right? Ferrets, pole dogs? What up, pole dog? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, isn't that what they refer to parrot, uh, ferrets as? Pole dog, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never heard that? <laughs> Polecat, pole dog. <laughs> Polecat, something like that, dude. <laughs> Polecat is a skunk, is it? Is it? I heard somebody call them a pole dog one time, and I was like, oh, that's different. I, I've never heard that before. I don't know. I don't remember where I heard or saw that at. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, dude. <laughs> What's up, buddy? <laughs> How you doing, dude? Anyways, I digress. <laughs> a pole cat is a skunk, huh? Okay, I'll try to keep that in mind. I've actually seen some videos of people that have skunks as, like, pets. Dude, they're super flipping cute. <laughs> I'm not wrong, according to Wiki. <laughs> dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. Hey, dude, learn something new every day. All right, dude. All right. Yeah, I remembered. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> I'm going to start saying that to you now. Yeah. Oh, polecat is sometimes applied to the black-footed ferret, a native member of them. Um, okay. Only the black-footed ferret. Oh, okay, cool. Nice, dude. Right on. Yeah. That's interesting, dude. Huh. Wild. I wonder why. I wonder why. That's interesting. Only that species, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess that, that, makes, that makes sense, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Like I said, dude, I've seen some videos of people that have skunks as pets. They look adorable and hilarious and fun, but I don't want to deal with that stink. You know what I mean? Which I know you can like have those glands removed and stuff, but you know, they're also, they're, they're just not an animal that's, you know, been bred for, um, us to have as pets, you know, like, like cats and dogs, but Oh, bro, that stink? Uh-uh. No way. No way. It's kind of the same thing as, like, a raccoon. Dude, I would love to have a raccoon as a pet, but it's it's the thing that would keep me from it is raccoons are so ornery, dude, and they're into everything. You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing that, that would keep me from it. And apparently, dude, whenever they, like, are in, uh, it's, like, mating season stuff, they go crazy. Like, apparently they go nuts, dude, when it's mating season and just just destroy stuff dude so i don't want to deal with that either but they look uh phoenix fox what is that what's a phoenix fox do here i'll pull it up we're getting we're already getting way off of gaming news but <laughs> i like animals dude so oh it's a phoenix phoenix okay Oh, dude, I have seen these. Yeah, these things are... Fo foxes are crazy, too, dude. That the th You know, the thing that... Um, they're like, they're really cute. Most, you know, foxes are really cute. But, dude, I can't stand the way they sound. <laughs> and they just, they just cry and whine and stuff. Like, even when they're happy, the noises they make is irritating to me, man. It's just really irritating to me. They're like... Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, dude, I can't do it. Because <laughs> there are a lot of people that have foxes, you know? Or you see videos of them all the time and stuff. Like, wah, 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 wah. I'm like, no, dude, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Like, like I actually, I love, um, I love, uh, I think huskies are hilarious, you know? They're a very vocal animal as well, like for a dog, you know? Huskies are so vocal, dude, you know? And I, I just wouldn't be able to deal with that, man, <laughs> you know? I love seeing videos of it and, like, uh, seeing other people have to deal with it, but I, I wouldn't particularly want to have to deal with it myself. I don't mind, like, like regular, just a normal dog, but huskies are on a whole nother level, bro. Like, they just, they are so vocal all the time. You know, I'd just be like, Jesus, dude, like, can somebody shut that dog up? <laughs> yeah, it'd be too much for me, dude. I don't think I can handle it, dude. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah, we talked about game um, stopping selling their pre-owned titles. Uh, violent video games do not diminish empathy. Uh, consider me not surprised, you know of everything that I know about all the research that's been done about the, the, you know, video games and how they don't promote violent tendencies and uh, how good they are quite often uh, for cognitive development and things of that nature. Yeah, more and more research is proving that video games are uh, actually more beneficial than they are uh, even remotely detrimental to us. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, dude. <coughs> mm. Let's see. Oh, 
I got some new, um, so like I told everybody, if you're not familiar, you don't, you, you didn't know yet, or, um, you know, we have the new video gaming news channel in the discord and, um, I'm starting to throw every day's articles that we're going to go over into their, uh, respective under their respective dates for um i'll just put like a header and then i'll put all the articles underneath in um in the channel for each day or uh, yeah in that channel the video gaming news channel and uh, what i also am doing is like anytime i upload any uh, youtube videos um like last night i got about what six yeah about six new videos on youtube uh that came uh, that i felt were pretty pertinent Definit, you know, like like uh, dedicated videos from uh, new segments over about the past week, week and a half that I was like, these feel like they should probably have their own VOD. And so I, I, I took those out of the, you know, their new segment, their respective news segments and gave them their own VODs, uploaded those to YouTube. And what I'm doing with those as well is just going to link those into the uh, news channel also. So if anybody's interested in some of the more what I feel to be pertinent things that we're addressing over the weeks, then I'm throwing those in there as well. If anybody's interested. Okay. So, um, just ease of access for all the things that I think that we're covering that are important as far as, uh, the video gaming industry is concerned and the news is concerned, you know, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not a fan of, of a lot of what Roblox does. Hmm. Yeah, where was that? I forgot to grab that. I've got a couple of them, actually. Yeah, yeah, let's pull this up, thanks. Yeah, this is actually really wild. But no, it's not even close, you know, how stupid is that? Yeah, thanks for this, by the way. Thanks for reminding me to grab this. I've got another one I need to throw in here, too. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ferret, I appreciate it. How stupid is that, dude, Jesus. I saw this, and like, when you put that in yesterday, I was like, oh my god, dude. <laughs> like, what? And then we've got this to talk about, too. Um, Tim Wynn brought this to my attention on um, Tuesday afternoon. Do you see this? This stupid, like, wannabe Splatoon game that PlayStation's coming out with, this Foam Stars or whatever, is uh, just basically rampant with AI development. You know? So we're going to talk about that today as well. Um, I don't know. We got, we got things to cover for sure. Look at Square Enix, or not, is it Square that's developing that? Who's developing that? Yeah, it's Square. It's Square. Square's developing this. Yeah, they're, they're, dude, they're getting gross. Square Enix is just getting disgusting, dude. New Xbox Game Pass titles for console, PC, and cloud. Pull that up. Oh, no. Rocksteady's founders have opened a new AAA studio. And I am willing to bet. Oh, bro. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, I think it's already suffering from just what they did with Final Fantasy 16. I think there are a lot of fans that ha are already turning away from that series now, you know? Long time fans, I mean, I consider myself one of them, you know? Long time fans of the Final Fantasy series that saw Final, what Final Fantasy 16 turned into. Not that it was a bad game per se, but it wasn't a Final Fantasy game, you know? And that's a that's a unfortunate look at what the future potentially holds for that series for, for you know long-term fans long-time fans uh let me say something here yeah 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 um i haven't played all of them you know i haven't played all of them but i've been a, i've played a lot of them and i've been a long-time fan of that series I, I mean even not playing final fantasy 16 and just knowing what that game was that it wasn't really an rpg and for for the most part 
and um, you know it's just a, it's a really sad look so let me say something here Final Fantasy uh, 8 and 9 9 was really cool 8 was forgettable <laughs> The, the best thing about Final Fantasy VIII, dude, was the mini game inside of it, the card game. There's a mini game inside a card game that you like. Uh, they, they were hidden, or they were like game, these cards scattered all over the. It was kind of like Gwent, you know, but it was its own mechanic and it was like creatures from within the Final Fantasy world and everything instead, you know? So it's like, it was like a digital card game you would play with other NPCs in the world and stuff like that. You could win cards, you could find, uh, you know, powerful cards in the world if, you know, you were looked in the right spots and things like that. So uh, that was the best thing about Final Fantasy VIII, dude. Other than that, I was not a fan of Final Fantasy VIII, which was really a bummer because Final Fantasy VII was like, uh, yeah, I I don't even really remember it fully about that uh, part of it. I just remember like Final Fantasy VII being so flipping good, and then playing Final Fantasy VIII and just being bored most of the time you know just being like god this is a really really bad you know title to follow final fantasy 7 with <laughs> you know i was like god, i am not enjoying this you know i think most people i was i mean how do you follow something like final fantasy 7 though it's like it's pretty it's pretty tough to do i think i mean it's that's an iconic game for a reason and uh it yeah it's that's a tough one to follow up but uh, eight was not a lot of people's favorite game in the final fantasy series i think most people i've I've talked to some people that really enjoyed it but i think for the most part a lot of people were like yeah it was forgettable really <laughs> the card game was cool though um this whole Re Rock Steady's founders have opened a new AAA studio let me let me let me talk about something here you know we, we've been talking a lot here lately about bad business decisions uh bad business decisions in the industry uh tech and gaming um as a whole that have potentially led to all these layoffs we're seeing and things like that i'm going to talk about something rocksteady is potentially starting a new studio now and i don't see Suicide Squad doing well. So, does this have the potential to lead us to a bad situation for Rocksteady moving forward? I think so. Um, how do you how do you do this right now when you're you haven't even released your your next big game yet? And what happens if this game's a flop? You know? If this game's a flop and it doesn't hit the kind of numbers that you're expecting, what what does that mean for this new AAA studio? Are you going to be able to still fund it and support it and everything? This is the kind of stuff... Uh, yeah, potentially. But I mean, this is this is the kind of stuff that, that is concerning for me too, you know? Uh It's just, you're probably right, Ferret. You're probably right. And it, it just, it doesn't make any sense, man. I don't think Suicide Squad's going to be very good. We're already seeing a lot of stuff come out of, like, um, review sites that have gotten early uh, hands-on editions of, of the game. And they're like, eh, it's pretty repetitive. <laughs> Not a whole lot to it. Uh could could yeah yeah i mean i'll be honest with everything that i know about uh suicide squad kill the justice league i don't want rocksteady to su succeed right now i just don't uh if you had if we were talking about rocksteady before everything we knew about uh suicide squad kill the justice league i'd have been like yeah i want them to succeed i want them to do great i want them to continue making games and everything right now i don't i don't want to see anything more from them i don't i think it's disgusting i think coming out with a triple a price tag game for the base game 70 dollars 100 dollars for the deluxe edition 
right? And then it's just riddled with monetization and everything. It's a disgusting look. I, and to come from a, a studio that everybody fell in love with because of like the Batman Arkham series and stuff, th it's it's a rough look. I don't care to see anything else from them right now. Um, I think that this is just another look at studios turning into something disgusting. And um, I have concerns here. We'll talk about this more as we pull this article up. But, it, you know, it's it's not a good look as far as I'm concerned. Um, Frostpunk, Frostpunk 2 gameplay and Game Pass Day 1 release. All right. We talked about this. This is what I'm not even going to dive into this. This is what I'll say. Um, Valve has already told us that we should not, as a, you know, community of gamers, and, um, that we really shouldn't expect the Steam Deck 2, uh, if that's what it'll be called. <coughs> we shouldn't expect that for another couple of years, probably. Uh, 2026, 2027, we shouldn't expect it until then. So I wouldn't hold your breath. If we get it before then, cool. But uh, they've already publicly, officially stated, we should not expect to have anything before then. They just upgraded the original Steam Deck with OLED, bigger battery, things of that nature. And they're honestly, you know, what they've said is until there can be a huge generational leap for the hardware, they don't see any point in making a, a I mean, the, this, it's only been out for, what, going on two years now? Something like that? It's not like they're due for a, I mean, a, a, a new version of their hardware yet. You know, consoles run on a roughly, you know, seven-year life cycle before their their you know replacement gets released and even if we're like talking like 2027 that's just going to put the the original steam deck at about a five year old pace before they they get a new piece of hardware out so that's still well under the normal life cycle so i, I don't think there's anything worth diving into here if it comes out before then we'll touch on it but i i, I think this is probably a little bit of clickbait you know um and just know that if you're expecting anything for the next iteration of Steam Deck hardware, you probably we're probably not going to see it for another two to three years, as that's what Valve has actually told us themselves. Everything we know about The Sims 5 is that Everybody should go play something else because this is EA and we all know that it's going to be disgustingly monetized. Okay. I think that's the most anybody needs to know about The Sims 5. <laughs> cool. Get a right. new Vancouver based EA, there you EA, go. <laughs> EA studio. E yeah. EA. EA. Sorry, guys. Love to so see that to working, that dude. <laughs> wanting to throw up. Love to see it. Jesus. Fortnite's receiving backlash for LGBTQ plus characters. I mean, God forbid everybody in society be, uh, you know, represented in entertainment, you know? I mean, come on, man. I just, it's its its wild because anytime there's a big video game like the League of Legends or Fortnite and they throw in like a, a gay character or something, you know, it's like, it's, it's, they just, there's always these groups and organizations that throw a fit about it. And it's like, can you guys just let people live their best lives, dude? You can't make everybody happy. I, I, you're absolutely right. You can't make everybody happy. That's why I think that 
the best thing you can do is just give as many options as possible. Represent everybody. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's. It, I, I think that the worst thing you can do is just um, like the way it used to be. You know, it was just in in most video games there was there weren't a lot of options. It was just very stereotypical. You know, it was like a mid thirties Caucasian flipping. You know, like blonde or, or brown haired blue eyed dude that did everything you know what I mean? it's like, but I think the best thing developers can actually do is just represent to the greatest uh, extent possible but it, it's just so stupid that so many people have an issue I mean what it comes down to is I think the thing that's dumb is that there are so many people in the world that have an issue of just letting people live their best life you know that's what it comes down to it's like, and I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think that there's something to be said for, you know, as far as pushing this kind of agenda and, and the issues of sexuality and, and things like that onto a younger audience, it doesn't need to be there. Younger kids don't need to worry about that stuff, dude you know whether it be sex or sexual orientation or gender or whatever the gender identity you, you know what i mean it, dude they don't need to worry about that so if they're going through it themselves they'll go through it nobody else needs to be pushing thoughts onto them and stuff that's the problem i think that if anybody is naturally going to be uh d you know dealing with that kind of thing let them naturally deal with it there it's fine for them to need you know to reach out for some like support or whatever to let them know that that's an okay thing to be dealing with right but to have people be pushing them one way or the other like you know it, it is is not the answer you, you they need to go through these processes naturally i think is is the the problem and uh it's just such a weird thing uh we deal with nowadays I don't know, but it's it's just so so crazy that people can't just be represented as a whole, you know. <clears throat> Pal World, oh my God, we're gonna pull this up, dude! I'm so excited about Pal World. Oh, here we go, dude! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foam Stars AI art usage. So we're gonna pull this up. We're gonna talk about this um, right here as well. Cool. Pheromonium? What is this? Oh, yo, dude, I'm really excited about it, too. We might start playing it pretty soon. <laughs> I want to wait and see what people are saying. on Because today is today the early access? When does the early access hit? Is it today? That's been on my wish list, dude, forever. Since, like, me, myself and Pinky. Dude, we've been looking at Pal World. Uh, it's either today or tomorrow. Tomorrow, there it is, yeah. Um, we've been watching this dude. Uh, hey, look at, look at these guys. Look at these two guys. Look, a little, little ferret right there. There's a little pink boy right there. <laughs> Who's that? Smelly Trelly. Um, dude, we've been watching this game for a long time. Ever since we first saw the trailer, dude, which was like, what, a year, year and a half ago? We've been stoked about this. And, um, I'm excited to maybe get in here and, and get a shot at this unlock in approximately 19 hours so uh there's a the, a chance you know, who knows maybe maybe we start playing this tomorrow weekend pal world play you know what i'm saying maybe maybe yeah yeah i mean that's kind of one of the things that i'm worried i'm thinking too is like maybe i'll get up tomorrow and we'll talk about this later on today too i might get up tomorrow when it releases in 19 hours so dude it's literally hitting at like it'll be out before i even start streaming tomorrow you know so um i want to get a look at what like r people are saying about how the game feels first you know um because it, it's one of those titles i'm really psyched about i've been psyched about it for a long time but the fact that it's going to be early access you know it, it kind of gives me a bit of a cushion to go well 
I don't have to play it right now. If it needs a little, if people are, uh, you know, going like, well, it could probably use a little more bake in time, then I'm not going to totally disregard it, but I might not play it right now either, you know? So it's one of those kinds of situations for me, but I'm really stoked about it. I really want to see it. We'll talk about it. Fearmonium. Oh, we've seen this. We've seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked about this. I'm not going to dive in on that one. Larian Studios games won't be on subscription service. We've talked about that as well. All right, we'll pull this up. This will give me something to talk about here too. You know, I think, uh, you know, it. I want to talk about the difference between a game being promoted as a cinematic journey uh, in contrast to games that are not being promoted that way, of uh, being promoted as a true video game that are more of a cinematic experience. I feel uh, jebated by those types of games. Oh, sick, dude. Nice. Yeah, we can get a whole bunch of people in there. We're going to rule that world. You know what I'm saying? One second. We're going to rule the PAL world. <laughs> Looks like Solid Snake skins are going to be in Fortnite. We'll just look past that uh, gaming Bible stuff. Click baby. Thunderful group laying off twenty percent of their staff. Jesus, dude, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you mean wasn't in the news that you saw? The DRM stuff? We covered that. If that's what you're talking about. We absolutely did cover that. Yeah. If that's what you're referring to. Oh. Oh yeah. 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 That's a, you know, I actually, funny enough, dude, I had looked at this. There's some pretty good sales on steam. I'll pull that up in just a moment. Um, yeah. The, um, I saw the Mega Man stuff too. And there's some old banger Mega Man games I was looking at as well, dude, on the sale. Uh, Right, right, exactly. Yeah, they they they're basically uh they're uh, like what is their own in house DRM stuff and and uh, you know that's why I've got that you know it was, it was an appropriate thing to pull this up into the um video gaming news stuff. I I made a dedicated article uh this one right here for anybody that might want to see it um about this whole situation you know and, and that i actually saw that Mega Man sell, sell as well and i was like yeah you know it feels kind of bad so i i like took a quick peek and i was like as soon as i started looking i was like oh yeah capcom drm yeah probably not <laughs> probably not yep so i don't know feels bad dude feels bad but you're not wrong so Yep. Uh, sell forth. Today's the last day to grab self sell forth on Epic. By the way, you got like three hours, a little over three hours left to grab self forth. And then it will be love, 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 love. 
Um, that'll be free for the next week, okay, on Epic. Yeah, and there are some good sales on Steam right now. Uh, Choo Choo Charles. I know Ferret already has that one. Darkwood as well. You know, these are right up Ferret's alley. You know, yeah, I know. It's pretty disgusting, dude. Um, this Bokura game looks pretty wild. Uh, Cappy and I were looking at this the other day. Um, it's like a, it's a, a two-player game. You have, it has to be multiplayer. So, pretty wild. Looks good. But, uh... Pretty good sales. Uh, Darkwood is a uh, notoriously good uh, top-down horror game. Choo Choo Charles, obviously, another great horror game. Green Hell, man. Um, lots of good stuff. One second. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each player sees something different, right? Yeah, I was actually thinking about it might be a cool game for my wife and I to play, you know, uh, but we would we would need to play in like different rooms and stuff too. Uh, it might be a cool one for the kids to play together or something as well, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's what we were, we were talking about the other day. Yeah, this Bill Cura game is pretty wild. So it's like one world is like these cutesy like little animals and stuff. Yeah, and the other side's like they're like the the animals and everything look like Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what you just said. Yeah, they look like robots and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild, dude. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. No, it looks pretty neat, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a neat uh neat way to uh a, a neat take on like a multiplayer kind of game, you know, a co-op game, I guess. You know, it's pretty wild. Green Hell, uh good sell there. The Mega Man stuff, like we said, uh, obviously, you know, there's some issues there with Capcom and their DRM stuff. Red, uh, uh, RoboQuest, dude, this game, so, okay, first of all, Tiny Tina's Wonderland is um, 15 bucks. This is Borderlands with D&D &D vibe, okay, so uh, this is actually supposed to be decent, uh, depending on if you like Borderlands and, and you can do a Borderlands vibe with some D&D &D stuff in it, right? Um, <laughs> RoboQuest is supposed to be amazing, dude. This game is supposed to be very, very good. It's been my, on my wish list for quite a while. And, uh, Pinky's been playing this, dude. And, uh, I've, I've talked to other people, uh, that have been playing this game as well. And everybody is just blown away by this game, actually. It's a roguelike game. Um, and it's supposed to be very, 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 very good. And it's on sale right now as well. Um, what else we got? Hell Let Loose on sale. Trepang 2. This is basically spiritual successor to... Uh, oh, why am I tripping, bruh? Oh, Jesus. I'm tripping. I can't think right now. Um, But yeah, you know, that one. Jesus, give me a break. The Fear Games, dude. The Fear Games. Like, I, one word, one word, four letters. Can't think of it. No demo for RoboQuest. Oh, interesting. Wait, what? You can't download a demo for RoboQuest? I can. Oh, you can. Yeah, 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 you can. That's misinformation, Ferret. <laughs> You absolutely can, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you're interested, yeah, at least go try the demo and see if you might be interested in playing the, the game. You know, it's 25% off right now. <laughs> um, then there's also, like, the Bioshock uh, collections, 12 bucks. That's a good sell right there. There's a lot of good games right now on sale on Steam. And right after the winter sale, too. So, I mean, if you guys are inter interested, you know, it's definitely worth uh, taking a look at getting some of these games right now, I think get back in here this is terrible that's crazy
Ugly Sonic. Oh, dude, that was nightmare fuel. Tomb Raider 1 through 3 remastered shows off fantastic overhaul. Let's take a look at this. Oh no! It looks like we're not getting any shadow drops, dude. They're saying there's not going to be a shadow drop for the developer direct that we're going to watch to end the stream today. So... Uh, I guess there's that. Everybody was hoping for one after what happened last year with Hi-Fi Rush, you know? <sighs> oh, yeah, we already talked about this. Uh, Eddie is the first DLC character coming to Tekken 8. And we already saw the video and everything on Tuesday. Eddie is a sick character, always has been. Uh, he's like the easiest button mash character <laughs> for newbies. and uh, But he's got a lot of really cool moves and everything too. Suicide Squad introduces interesting Batman feature. Okay, let's see what we got. Yo, this is what uh, Ferret already gave to us. So Remedy and Take Two go to war with the uh, 18th letter of the alphabet. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. These companies, man. These companies, dude. <laughs> Those logos aren't even close, dude. <laughs> I'm flipping starving this morning. <laughs> Call of Duty Warzone is totally broken after the latest update. <laughs> nice. nice. Looks like there's a uh, a new patch out for the finals, some buffs and nerfs there if anybody's uh, playing that. Didn't have enough progression for me, man. Is Enshrouded multiplayer co-op explained? We'll take a quick peek at that too. Excuse me, what? Baldur's Gate 3 crowned the best performing PC game of what? Really? Oh, best performing game on Steam in terms of units sold. Okay. That's different. Because this was my issue. This game, when this game released, it had a lot of issues in, in Act 3. It still has some, you know, a little bit of some issues that need to be fleshed out performance-wise and stuff. Um, overall, it feels great. But... I was like, dude, there are games that have come out this year that no doubt, performance-wise, feel better overall than this game does. And that's why I was tripping.
I wonder how this transition of, you know, Helldivers 1 was, it was just like a top down, what was it, like a, a three quarters top down kind of game, right? Or was it just straight up top down mainly? Um, and now Helldivers 2 um, is going to be all third person shooter and stuff, right? Yeah, you're not wrong, Ferret. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I promote GOG. You know, I've got issues with CDPR, obviously. You know, I've, I've got issues with the way that company uh, releases their titles, you know, performance-wise and stuff. So I bag on CDPR quite often. Um, but I promote GOG all the time, and it's because of that DRM-free side of it, man. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. It really is. More people need to be uh, taking a serious look at, at utilizing GOG as a platform, in my opinion. It's great. Really. Yep. So. Uh, Helldivers 2 looks pretty cool, man. It's our, Is it already out? When did... When does this release? Oh, February 8th. We got like two weeks left. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't think it was out yet. Um, it's only a $40 price point, which is interesting. And it is quite a different looking game than, than the first Helldivers was. I love that just everybody just looks like Boba Fett, you know? <laughs> I can't get over it. We'll have to see how that game does on release. All right, there's one thing I wanted to look at. I thought I, I, I saw earlier. <clears throat> Let me see something here. Maybe not. Oh, for real? One by 2.2 seconds. Oh my God. Speed run with 100% items gathered. Jesus Christ. Two point. Wait, what was, what was the total time of the run though? How long did it take him to do the run? Speed runners are nuts, dude. The, it's a different breed, dude. That's a different breed of gamer, man. I love watching speed runners. I am not a speed runner by any means, but I love watching it. A little over two hours, <laughs> bro. That's wild. Okay, maybe I maybe I didn't see what I thought I saw. All right, let's stick with these articles, dude. These will be our articles. Uh, the way they moved was nuts. <laughs> yeah, bro. I, know. I I dude, I can't even like, I can't even parkour in games, right? You know what I mean? So let alone try to speed run a game. You know, I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Dude. Yeah. yeah, me and you both, bro. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Yep, I'm right there with you, buddy. Me and you. All right, I guess we started off with uh, another terrible look at uh, 2024. 2024, just... Whew. What a, uh, a dark, dark look at, at uh, the industry just seeping over from what happened last year into this year, you know. Thunderful Group to lay off around 20% of its staff in an attempt to make the company stronger. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, a lot of, of speedruns are about that, right? There are ways in which you can just, uh, you know play the game in a way that will allow you to skip cutscenes, and that cuts a huge chunk of time out dude cuts a huge chunk of time out for most speedruns. yeah it's crazy 
Um, CEO believes restructuring is a necessary direction. Thunderful Group. Thunderful Group, a Swedish video game holding company that owns a number of game publishers and developers as well as gaming and toy distribution companies, has announced that it plans to lay off a fifth of their staff as it restructures its operations. <clears throat> announced January 17th, a press release stated that the restructuring process is being put in place in order to strengthen the group's long-term competitive position with the aim of reducing costs and focusing on areas with the best future growth and profitability prospects. <clears throat> Excuse me. This comes primarily as a result of overinvestments made in the last few years. That have proven unsus uh, unsustainable given the current industry climate and challenging marketing conditions. Um, at least they're actually admitting their mistakes. Most of these companies doing these firings right now won't even admit to something as vague as this, you know. In a statement, Thunderful CEO Martin Wolf has said that these decisions have been difficult to make, but is convinced this is a necessary direction for the company. Uh, I'm going to go back to this, so give me a second. To ensure and strengthen the viability of the group, we have found no alternative other than to reduce costs and focus the business on areas with the best future growth and profitability prospects, he said. It's been difficult to make these decisions, and it saddens me that we will have to say goodbye to too many skilled colleagues and partners. Nevertheless, I'm convinced this is a necessary direction for Thunderful and that these changes will make the company a stronger player in the market. Thunderful owns a variety of subsidiaries, including Rising Star Games, published, which published uh, Harvest Moon and Rune Factory titles, developer CoatSync, which made the uh, slice of life fishing RPG Moonglow Bay, and distribution company uh, Bergsala. Um, at the time of writing, Thunderful hasn't confirmed which parts of the company will face staff cuts. Tech Radar Gaming reached out to ask, but was not provided with a comment. Now, here's the thing. This is, I'll go back to the same thing um, that I say every single time. At least, they admitted this, but it's still very vague, right? They admitted this, but it's still very vague. Um, now, they don't talk about what these uh, overinvestments were. What up, Soup? Good morning, my friend. Happy Thursday. They don't talk about the, what these overinvestments were. They don't talk about what these bad decision, uh, business decision, uh, you know, kind of ventures uh, entailed. Um, but what we do know is that they didn't say anything <coughs> about who ultimately made these business decisions, whether anybody you know that was a part of these bad investments and bad business decisions from the top of the company um paying a price because they probably didn't they're probably still making six and seven figure salaries they're probably still getting their bonuses but a fifth of the staff is going to pay the price for it right this is not a situation where we're actually hearing a, a company come out and go, look, we, uh, we're, we're, we've done everything we can to try and uh, hold on to these employees. We've taken pay cuts. People aren't taking bonuses, you know, things like that. No. This is a vague outline of we made some bad business decisions, so we're going to cut a fifth of the jobs. And more than likely, the people that are going to pay the price are lower to mid-level employees that had nothing to do with these bad investment uh, processes. Right? Just another example of what we get day in and day out right now uh, uh, that we read uh, in the news segments here. It's brutal. Brutal. Um, finally finished Ratchet after half a year. Yo, dude. Let's go. That's winning, dude. Nice. Good for you, Soup. Do you feel accomplished? You feel like life's just a little bit more complete? You know what I mean? I'm happy for you, buddy. That's great. So, it was, uh... Do 
super accomplished. Nice, dude. 148, dude. Jesus, not even two hours. That's crazy, man. Right on. That's dope. That's cool, man. I haven't gotten to watch any GDQ, man. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I haven't gotten to watch any of it. But I love it. Oh, yo, yo. Santa. New shake weight jam. <laughs> New shake weight jam. Booty, yeah. baby. A pretty funny gaps. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's really impressive, dude. Um, here we go. Tomb Raider 1 through 3 remastered shows off fantastic overhaul in new blog post. Oh, that Polly Lara. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tomb Raider is an absolute classic. It's great to see the first three getting restored. Aspire uh, is going all the way with this one. And in a blog, PlayStation blog post showed off just how much they've, uh, work they've been they've put into giving us the best Lara Croft has to offer. Everything from new models to photo mode is here. Even the trophy hunters will be impressed with over 200 to collect. Lara has never looked this good. Check it all out below. <clears throat> It's been almost 30 years since Lara Croft took her first snowy steps in the mountains of Peru. In about 30 days, PlayStation players will get to re-experience Lara's first three globe-trotting adventures with a fresh look and feel in Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Remastered on PlayStation 4 and 5. Um, yeah, as Crystal Dynamics continues to expand the Tomb Raider franchise... The timing seemed perfect to reintroduce audiences to the games that started it all. Wanted to both honor the foundations of the franchise and make accessible to modern audiences the original games in all their glory. Um, what would the balance of preservation and modern uh, modernization look like? We call it Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Remastered starring Lara Croft. Remastered defined. Within pre-production, we divided the conversation into three buckets. Engineering, gameplay, and art. With these categories in mind, we led our conversations in the same order. Um, had a firm belief the gameplay of Tomb Raider, uh, the the Tomb Raider one through three games, are timeless. And with the use of existing source code, we had every jump, secret, enemy, and puzzle exactly as the original development team designed and intended. Conversation evolved into how do we surprise and delight these fans, and that's where we started brainstorming additions instead of revisions. Classic and modern control options. Right stick has full camera control. And Laura moves directionally based on camera position. The original tank style controls are still available to players via a menu toggle. That's cool. Boss health bars. Uh, one of... Tomb Raider's strengths was the minimal UI. However, this can be frustrating for tougher bosses with massive amounts of health. Added health bar to let you know if you should swap to the grenade launcher or if you should keep soaking pistol damage. Nice. Look at the difference, dude. This looks good. Mods for Lara Croft. <laughs> Yo, but if you're going to mod a new Lara Croft, it better be the, the, uh, the poly version, not this one. We want this one nude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't want this, this, uh, this version, uh, you know, modded, nuded out. We want this one. <laughs> We need, we need that poly, dude. We need those those triangle boobas, dude. <laughs> <I'm living. laughs> Jesus, dude. Look how good it looks, though. This looks great, man. This looks really good. <laughs> this looks really good, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we've already talked about that soup. Yeah. Nude Raider. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. PlayStation 1? 
No, 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 no. No, no, no. I think I think that's the other way around. I think you're looking at that wrong to be fair. Mm -mm. This is Xbox winning. And I'll tell you why too. We'll finish this up and I'll tell you why <clears throat> that's not PlayStation winning. That's Xbox winning. This looks quite uh, quite good though. Looks really good. 3D item sprites or replacements. While the menus in Tomb Raider used 3D models for the health kit and ammo, the in-game assets were flat 2D sprites. This was a legacy compromise that we've ju adjusted to give a little more oomph to item pickups. Over 200 trophies. Uh, this is a big moment for the Tomb Raider community, so we made sure to pack in as much content as possible. We're excited to say there are over 200 trophies to earn, including my personal favorite, locking the butler in the freezer. Sorry, Winston. See below for a sneak peek of a, a few you can look forward to discovering. Yeah, it looks good, dude. This looks good. There's a photo mode now in the game. Nice. Baked and real-time lighting effects, graphics toggle, new models, environments, and enemies. Yeah, look at this, dude. This looks really good. New model for Laura. Original outfits are stunning. Her silhouette, iconic. Yeah. This is great, dude. This is really cool. Yo, I closed out that last article too, didn't I? Yeah, I need to leave that open. This looks really good, man. This looks really good. We'll talk about this. Let me let me pull up what Soup has here in chat, and we'll talk about this real quick too. Okay, so we already knew that um, Microsoft, some of Microsoft's first-party games are going to be releasing ac across um, all platforms and stuff. And you know what Soup says here is uh, PlayStation's winning. This isn't PlayStation winning. This is Xbox winning. This is Microsoft winning. Um. And I'll explain to you why that is. So, we've already talked about this a little bit. And um, I'm not going to read this entire article. So, it's there in chat if you guys want to read it. We already knew this was happening. There are games that uh, have been... Uh, talked about here lately like Sea of Thieves that are supposed to be hitting all other platforms so like that PlayStation things of that that nature uh, oh yeah oh fair for sure yeah no doubt dude no doubt um, so this is the thing and I've talked about this a lot Microsoft Xbox is a much more progressive console gaming company than um Nintendo and PlayStation are <clears throat> in a lot of ways. They are pushing the envelope, as it were, on um, where gaming is headed, right? Yeah, Ferret, no worries. So when you talk about um, how set in their ways and traditional the other console companies are, like Nintendo and PlayStation, they are very, very... <clears throat> um, traditional and uh are not even close to really pivoting away from the these notions of our games are our games and we're not going to let any other platform get our games so other gamers cannot play our games unless they buy our hardware right and <clears throat> that's the way consoles have been for a very long time and um that's what has led to so much strife in the gaming industry about the console wars, if you will, right? Now, <clears throat> the reason I say that in large part why Xbox is much more progressive is because they have had to find ways to be more inventive and more creative in being competitive 
in the market, to, to remain competitive, to remain something that could compete with PlayStation and Nintendo that have traditionally been more profitable companies than Xbox has because they've sold more hardware and they've sold more first-party first software, right? <clears throat> so what they've done is they've uh, created the streaming service, their cloud platform, all these other ways for people to access. And what they're doing is they're, they're changing people's mindset. They're going, it shouldn't be about limiting people's access to where you can only play games if you have that hardware. And I talk about this a lot. There are a lot of gamers that hate that notion too. I'm one of them. I hate it. I think it's ridiculous. And how many times last year did we hear, you know, where people were throwing fits about, well, I can't play Starfield because all I have is a PlayStation, you know, or, or any uh, other game that came out, you know, or I, I can't play Final Fantasy 16, uh, you know, because all I have is, uh, you know, all I have is uh, an Xbox, so I can't play Final Fantasy 16, whatever, you know, so people, people actually hate it. People hate it. So what Xbox has been doing and working towards is accessibility of software, right? So what they're doing is actually getting their software in more people's hands. So they're getting their brand onto other platforms and into other gamers' faces. So now you can play your PlayStation and see Xbox. You're, you're going to, you know, that's, but you're not going to be able to play your Nintendo and see PlayStation. You're not going to be able to play your PlayStation and see Nintendo. You're not going to be able to, you know what I'm saying? It, this is a, a, a strategic move where Xbox is getting this notion out there that they are a gaming developer for the people. For us as enthusiasts, they are more worried about getting their products out there than limiting exposure and trying to make people buy their hardware. Xbox is winning. PlayStation is not winning off of this. Xbox is playing the long game. So while some people might see this and go, Oh, I'm winning because I'm a PlayStation consumer and I have PlayStation hardware. When you look at it from a business perspective and what the industry is about and what the industry is doing and how it is, um, you know, evolving and everything, this is Xbox playing the long game and Xbox is winning. Good night, dude. One second. <coughs> okay, sorry. Um, Suicide Squad introduces interesting Batman feature to excite players because they need to do anything they can. So, so here, here, let's let's we've got we've got a couple of things to talk about here with Rocksteady, Suicide Squad, stuff like that. Okay, Soup, I know you can't wait for this one, right? <laughs> can't wait to be let down by this title. I know, I know, I can, I feel you, buddy. And I know, I know you're psyched about this a little bit. What is happening out here? Hold on. There was just a ton of cars, dude. Crazy. All right, I think we're good. So, let me begin again. We've got um, this news about Suicide Squad. Then we've got news about Rocksteady. Um, 
I'll preface this with the fact of um, overall, I've been watching Suicide Squad through its development process, through its delays. Um, I, ha I don't have a, a lot of expectations out of this game. I never have. It's been a game that I knew was going to be riddled with monetization and coming out at a AAA price tag, which feels really gross. And um, everything that I had seen of the game really led me to believe that uh, there wasn't a whole lot of anything special here to get excited about, personally. I love loot and shoot games. I love them. But what I was seeing out of this wasn't anything that got me really excited, honestly. Um, <clears throat> I've, it just, it wasn't, <clears throat> wasn't there for me. And I, you know, was prompting people to be a bit hesitant here, um, on like on release, uh, purchases and pre-orders of this game, because I think it's a game that is worthy of being a little bit hesitant. Um, it, that way you're not getting baited into buying something that's just going to be really, really mediocre and maybe even repetitive and um, not worth that price tag. So um, on that note, um, we've already seen some early, this game doesn't come out for another couple weeks, right? Two and a half weeks, something like that. February 8th, I think. Um, but we've seen some review sites that have gotten their hands on early copies of the game They've tried it out, and they kind of said the same thing. It's fairly just mediocre. The cutscenes are good. The gameplay gets stale pretty quick. It gets kind of old. You're just doing the same thing all the time. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of variance in, in what you're doing, uh, like quest-wise or objective-wise. Um, it's you know it's it's if i think to from a lot of what we've seen there was a heavy heavy aim in ensuring they were getting the most they could out of the game monetization wise and not enough of a uh, aim at ensuring that the content was going to be there for people so uh i mean it doesn't mean i mean this is a game as a service it doesn't mean that it can't change moving forward into something better if it's not fantastic on release and we don't know quite yet i'm just saying that from what we know and what we've heard and what we've read and seen it's maybe not going to be a notably fantastic game on release so maybe be a bit hesitant okay um Suicide Squad introduces interesting Batman feature to excite players. Rocksteady Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League introduces a unique twist on Batman, offering players an unprecedented gaming experience. Um, what do we got here? So Rocksteady's latest venture, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, is setting a new bar for superhero video games. Is it, though? Particularly with its innovative portrayal of Batman. This iteration of the Dark Knight, a character rever revered in comic book lore and previous video games, is creating lots of excitement among the gaming community, especially following a series of exclusive uh, preview events. Enthusiastic fans were given the exclusive opportunity to delve into the world of Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League ahead of its highly anticipated launch next month, a captivating revelation concerning the game's interpretation of the iconic superhero Batman became the highlight of these events. Departing from conventional gameplay dynamics, this version of Batman showcases a dynamic feature where he actively follows players throughout the expansive open world of Metropolis. This embodiment of the Dark Knight's signature stalking tendencies provides an immersive twist to the gameplay. Um, the closed alpha test conducted by Rocksteady in November offered a select group of players a first-hand experience with the game while also serving as a testing ground for online servers. Subsequently, Rocksteady and WB Games organized a special preview event, granting access to press members and social media influencers. These events allowed for a sneak peek into the intriguing narrative of Suicide Squad. In the latest installment, players are pitted against brainwashed members of the Justice League, including the enigmatic Batman. The narrative unfolds with a unique twist, revealing Batman's involuntary involvement as one of the heroes under the control of Brainiac. The late Kevin Conroy uh, posthumously reprised his legendary role, adding emotional depth to the character's portrayal. This narrative angle places players in the uncommon position of becoming the target of the Caped Crusader in an unexpected reversal of roles from the familiar dynamics experienced in the Batman Arkham games. Um, the Dark Knight set to stalk players. 
During a recent preview event, the vigilant eyes of content creator Lejeune caught Batman's presence in the open world of Metropolis. The Dark Knight was observed lurking on a Wonder Woman statue, showcasing the meticulous and calculated approach uh, characteristic of Batman's modus operandi, or M.O., if you will. Later on, a, uh, later on a nearby rooftop, players witnessed the Cape Crusader taking off aboard his Batwing, adding a thrilling dimension to the gameplay. That's pretty cool, man. Yo, check this out. Gameplay of evil Batman stalking, studying the Suicide Squad in the open world. What? Dude, this that's kind of dope. Well, that's not it. Interesting. This portrayal aligns with Batman's trademark behavior seen in Rocksteady's Arkhamverse games, where the superhero meticulously studies his adversaries from a distance before tactically engaging them in battle. However, in Suicide Squad, players find themselves on the other side of the equation, becoming Batman's prey in an expansive open-world hunting ground of Metropolis. Suicide Squad's pre-release trailers have offered tantalizing glimpses into the tactics Batman will employ during the inevitable boss battle, showcasing the utilization of Scarecrow's signature fear toxin, and even hinting at the presence of what appears to be a firearm, as Rocksteady has lifted some of the restrictions of the non-disclosure agreement signed by players during the closed alpha. Fans can expect a steady stream of information about Suicide Squad uh, leading up to the February 2nd release. February 2nd release, excuse me, not 8th, the 2nd. This includes more uh, insights into the now villainous Batman, spying on Task Force X, and meticulously plotting his imminent attack, adding layers of suspense and anticipation to the game experience. <clears throat> Yo, here, here's a pic on Twitter of Batman. Check it. What am I looking at, dude? What is this no pixel, <coughs> low res flipping image? I can't even t I can't even tell what this is. Okay, dude. Um, interesting. That's a pretty cool inc uh, incorporation. Hey, you do you, buddy. All I can do is try and uh, help people, but take the advice or leave it. You're going to do you, you know what I mean? So, um, that's actually really, uh, I'm glad that they did this. Uh, for anybody that's going to play the game, and, and uh, I think that having Batman as somebody that's going to be just like out in the, the world that you'll see like kind of stalking you and stuff, that's very, very dope. <clears throat> So, um, the lightless world. So this is the next thing I want to talk about. And this, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about this. So, um, Rocksteady's founders have opened a new AAA studio in London. And the reason why this is concerning for me is because why would they be doing this, uh, before their new game has even dropped, you know? Um, I think that, and I have no idea what their financial situation is, but this is a, a situation for me where uh, we currently in the news right now, every single day read about companies uh, shutting down, laying off so many employees in the gaming and tech industry. I mean, you name it, you know, and the, the, the thing that it worries me here is like, um, It, it's it's they haven't even released their their new game yet right so we don't know how profitable it's going to be or anything like that and then they're they're talking about they're they're opening a new studio right so what happens in the event um this is scenario based right scenario based what happens they're opening this new studio and now they're about to release suicide squad what happens if suicide squad's a bust yeah if Suicide Squad is a bust, it is not hitting the figures that uh, they expected it to, and um, it, it, you know, is this? Are they just going to chalk this up to a, a bad uh, investment? 
and go, oh, well, this was not a, you know, this wasn't smart of us. <laughs> now we got to fire. We're going to shutter the doors of our, our, our new studio. Now we got to fire more employees. We made some bad business decisions. You know, why would you, why would you do this right now instead of waiting, waiting to see what your, uh, your next big game is going to do numbers wise, you know, unless you've just got that much overhead in, if that's the case, good for them. But I, I don't feel like that probably is the case. I don't, I mean, with everything that we see now, like every single day with these companies doing this to their employees, this, this is a scary look to me, you know, when, when you're, you're big project you've been working on for the past half decade is about to drop and you don't even know how it's going to do yet because you're two weeks away from the release and and now you're you know you've just opened a brand new triple a studio underneath your main studio that seems risky seems pretty risky man but rocksteady's founders have opened a uh, new triple a studio in london it's yet to be officially announced, but the co-founders of Rocksteady, um, Sefton Hill and Jamie Walker, have reportedly formed an all-new AAA studio in London. Going by the name of 100 Star Games, the company has been described as being a video game startup based in East London with a small team of only 100 industry veterans. The small team? That's not a small team. That's a very respectable number of developers, dude. Almost nothing is known about 100 Star save for a few details that can be taken from the company's uh, listing sites. There's a website for 100 Star, but it offers nothing other than a landing page. Um, Sefton Hill and Jamie Walker both left Rocksteady in 2022, almost 20 years after founding the studio and working on Urban Chaos, Riot uh, Response, and then the Batman Arkham series, and most recently the Suicide Squad game. According to Indol, uh, a company insight platform, they wasted no time in starting up something entirely new, incorporating 100 Star Games Limited in February. Okay, so it's not actually um, underneath Rocksteady. So it's just Rocksteady's founders opened. So they're they're not even um, affiliated with Rocksteady anymore at all. They, they left Rocksteady uh, altogether. Because Rocksteady's owned by Warner Brothers now, right? I'm pretty sure. Parent company is Warner Brothers and Time Warner. So um, that means that this is not quite the situation I thought it was initially. So I will backtrack and apologize. The way this came off to me was that Rocksteady was actually trying to start a subsidiary of their own. Like a, a branch, a, a different studio that was going to be off of them. So I apologize. This is actually the original founders of um, Rocksteady that are starting a, a entirely different studio for themselves uh, outside of uh, Rocksteady because they're no longer a part of it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, uh, then I retract my previous statements. And hopefully they do something really good here like the Batman Arkham games were. Our ethos is of creating a small team of only 100 industry veterans and emerging talents who are committed to crafting cutting-edge gaming experiences that inspire and captivate players worldwide. With innovative, excuse me, with innovation at our core, we're dedicated to pushing boundaries, embracing diversity, and fostering a vibrant gaming community. Our empowering co uh, company culture is unique to the industry, which encourages leadership at all levels, accountability, team support, vulnerability, and connection. Um... On Jamie Walker's LinkedIn profile, it stresses he's working on doing something new in secret. Not at all known what 100 Star um, is working on as the company's website only offers three facts. 100 people, AAA Games, London. Yeah. Interesting. Well, hopefully we see what Rock... You know, like like uh, Rocksteady used to be, <laughs> transfer over into uh, now 
what uh, 100 star will bring to the table for us you know interesting here you go this is a, another one for soup dude soup this is your jam dude call of duty call of duty oh dude i'm getting like stunlocked by an eyelash uh call of duty warzone is totally broken after the latest update <laughs> Warzone is in shambles after the brand new mid-season update. Call of Duty Warzone is one of the biggest video games on the planet. Takes the prestige of Call of Duty name and utilizes it in a free-to-play battle royale game that has dominated for the last four years. The satisfying, high-quality gunplay of the franchise has been perfectly implemented into the battle royale genre and become a match made in heaven. However, that hasn't stopped there from being a number of issues with the game. We've seen tons of hackers and cheaters, countless bugs, and other problems that have rendered Warzone in states of catastrophe on multiple occasions. The latest incident may be one of the worst, though. Today, a mid-season update for Call of Duty Warzone was released, and it was meant to be nothing but good news. But players are loathing it so far. For whatever reason, it has introduced a wealth of new issues for the game. The biggest issue is that whenever players go to claim their loadout in, in, in game, one of the core pillars of Warzone, the menu bugs out and locks players in a state where the menu just flashes repeatedly <laughs> on the screen and slows the game down tremendously. It essentially becomes unplayable. Players are also noting that the precision airstrike no longer notifies players that they're about to be hit by it. So you can airstrike players without them really being able to react accordingly. Some players aren't even able to get into games as they're being met with a screen that tells them it's fetching online profile on a loop. It, uh, it was also reported that created class is outright broken. No longer edit attachment, so that's great too. Nice, dude. On top of that, Raven Software has announced it's disabling the new Champions Quest feature as the update was botched, and they want to prioritize addressing these issues. Yo, yeah, Call of Duty, that's right. That's right. Absolute duty. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. What's up, True? How you doing? Uh, upon deliberation with our teams, we have decided to temporarily disable a new Champions Quest feature, said Raven. At the moment, the current state of the update does not meet our standards for quality and gameplay. Committed to addressing the issues promptly to ensure that all players can enjoy Warzone to the fullest extent possible. Goal is to always provide a smooth and seamless experience. As of right now, we have no idea when these things will be fixed, but one thing, uh, but one has to imagine Raven is working hard to make it happen quickly. Fans are dubbing this the worst Call of Duty update of all time, and the longer this goes on for, the harder it will be to earn back the trust of players. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Gotta love it, dude. Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard. Oh, I'm good. I'm a little bit tired. Small headache, a little bit tired. Other than that, I'm I'm good. Yeah, I'm solid. What's up with you? How are you? I need more coffee. That's for flipping sure. Doing much better. Good. I love to hear that, man. That's great. Yeah, awesome. How's the uh, how's the the uh, floor doing? In the uh, with all the 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 wetness. Is enshrouded multiplayer co-op explained? Do you dare play alone? One of the most anticipated survival games of 2024 has to be Enshrouded, but does it have a co-op multiplayer mode? Many survival games allow you to play with your friends, so we'll go over uh, if you can do the same in Enshrouded and how it all works. Enshrouded is it co-op multiplayer. Luckily, Enshrouded allows you to play co-op multiplayer with up to 16 players. Most online survival games will typically allow uh, up to play with four players at once, but it's nice to see this open world survival crafting game give you an extra room for a few more friends. Yeah, early access on January 24th. I've got it on my wish list right now. Um, you and 15 other players can survive, craft, fight, and build all in one world together. Of course, you'll have to be online for the co-op experience, obviously. Single player is available offline. I guess there's, I mean, you could potentially do local co-op but it doesn't look like they allow that uh the fact continues to saying that playing with a friend is just more fun than surviving alone as it strongly encourages you to play in co-op um don't have to worry about cross play since it's only available on steam eventually the developer wants to bring it to ps5 and xbox on its release as well yeah check it out uh i do have this on steam <clears throat> already wishlisted but
Got it all dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it starts smelling funky, you'll know. This is Enshrouded. It is a uh, crafting, survival, base building, open world, you know, type of game. Um, it looks like it could be cool. I, I've got it wishlisted. It's one of those games that I'm not quite sure about. I want to wait to see uh, what people are saying whenever it comes out, you know. The waiting game, that's right, yeah. So there you go. But it is going to be out here in uh, roughly a week, so we'll see. Pal World comes out tomorrow. Holy crap. Martha is dead and barks on a cinematic journey. Okay, look. This is... I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. Um, I have no issue with, you know, a lot of games being developed in, in a fashion of them primarily being a cinematic experience, you know, um, as long as they're promoted that way. They do not um, personally appeal to me, you know. There, there can be certain games that are more of a cinematic experience where it's like, you know, it, kind of a choices matter in, interactive uh, cinematic experience that could be cool depending on the vibe, the ambiance, the setting, stuff like that. Like, I think that uh, the one coming out from the Dead by Daylight creators uh, set in the Dead by Daylight world. Um, I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, the Frank Stone one or whatever. Um, you know, I think that my daughter and I might do that one together. But overall, video games for me are not something that I care to, you know, just sit through watching the majority of it. Um, most of the time, whenever I'm playing a game, I want to be playing a game. If I want to watch a movie, I'll go watch a movie. You know, the, the big thing for me is like, you know, I, if, if a game is going to be developed as a cinematic experience, mostly I, I want it to be promoted that way. I want it to be very, very explicitly written out there that, uh, this is definitely going to be something that is at least, you know, in large part going to be a cinematic experience. And I think this is where uh, certain games are starting to worry me because like with Alan Wake 2, I felt like uh, half that game was a cinematic experience and it was really off-putting for me. Final Fantasy 16, you've got just as much cinematic in that game as you do gameplay. That's off-putting for me. You know, uh, I, I don't necessarily care for that in those types of games. I want to be in control the majority of the time. Now, if a game is, is going to be developed in a way that you're, you know, going to be engaging in um, a primarily cinematic experience with a little bit of gameplay, promote it that way. That way people know what they're getting into. So people like me will probably avoid it, you know? Um and I think that's why, like, whenever I read a headline like this, I, I, I'm like, cool, man, this is, this is cool. I can dig this. It, if it's promoted this way, Martha is dead, cinematic journey, you know, like, great. You know, that's cool. Now, at least we know what we're in for here. Rather than a, a, a cinematic experience being um, kind of pushed on us like it's actually a video game, when it's not really major major you know the the majority of the gameplay experience is not actual gameplay you know um <laughs> nice soup i like it dude let's go so martha is dead it embarks on a cinematic journey we can probably announce that with collaboration from italian game studio lka and swedish film company uh, production company studios extraordinaires we have started an exclusive partnership with a film a feature film adaptation of the video game martha is dead oh Set in the picturesque yet war-ravaged landscape of Tuscany in 1944, Martha is Dead weaves a haunting narrative against the backdrop of World War II. Players step into the shoes of Gulia. Julia Gulia? That's a funny name. <laughs> I flipping can't. <laughs> 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 what movie was that off of dude that's adam sandler 
A young woman ensnared in a chilling mystery following the death of her twin sister, sister Martha. Every element of Martha is Dead was created with extraordinary precision and care. The narrative's complexity was meticulously planned, visualized, and even shaped with a cinematic quality in mind. Says Luca Dalco, uh, founder and director of LKA, writer and designer of Martha is Dead. Bringing this to life as a film is a dream come true. Um, I think that was one of the ones he did with uh, Drew Barrymore, right? Um, celebrated for its breathtaking detail and realism, Martha is Dead it has garnered world worldwide critical acclaim for its ability to blend the lines between reality, superstition, and the tragedy of war into a captivating mystery keeps players on edge until the very end of the game. <laughs> so let's take a look at this real quick. If you haven't seen that. Peggy 18. Yeah, it was the wedding singer, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was the wedding singer, actually. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that's a good movie, dude. I haven't thought about that movie in a long time. I've seen this before. I'm getting coffee, dude. I'm dying. I'm struggling. I need coffee. I'll be right back. Tell me a dream, please. I am in the woods near Nanny's house. I have the feeling that something bad is going to happen at any moment. So I look around with caution. I go to the lake and sit on the dock, dipping my feet in the water as always. It's the peak of winter and it's very cold. My feet begin to feel icy and weighty getting heavier and heavier. I try to pull them out of the water, but I can't. The harder I try, the more they sink. The lake rises up to my knees and continues to get higher and higher. I try to hold on to the dock with all my strength, but my back is scratching against the wood. I have to give up. This is creepy. Yeah, we like creepy. Now I'm underwater. I can see very little, but I can breathe. You know what else is creepy? It's cold. The water is warm, and I feel much better. However, in a short time, I realize I can no longer feel my feet. I look over to see my sister, Martha, who is eating me. She's long dead and looks horrible. She decayed. Her lips and ears are missing. Her dull eyes are absent from expression. What's creepy about that? I hear the sound of my bones crumbling without resistance against her teeth. She bites and swallows, bites and swallows, rising to my knees. I become increasingly nauseous to the point where I violently throw up. Oh, I should have turned off the music, sorry, guys. by pieces of my own body, shreds of flesh, Scraps my bad, my bad. Immersion was ruined there, I apologize. Spreads out amongst the water. With each new wheeze that I... I... I'm so scared, what should I do? <laughs> I was expecting something to, like, jump out there at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... The game's gripping narrative and unique setting make it a perfect candidate for a film adaptation. Yeah, so uh, the adaptation will be spearheaded by Studios Extraordinaires, creative powerhouse by Andre Hedetoft and Andreas uh, Trojson that specializes in crafting high-end action, horror, and science fiction films from original stories and extraordinary games. Okay. Well, we'll see what comes from it. Um, new, hold on, Xbox Game Pass titles for console, PC, and cloud have been revealed. Upcoming additions to the subscription service include Pal World, which comes out tomorrow. We might start playing this tomorrow, we'll see. Persona 3, Reload, and F123. Uh, Microsoft has announced the next wave of titles heading to Game Pass for console, PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. 
Those Who Remain joins the service today ahead of Turnip Boy Robs a Bank and F123 on January 18th. Yeah, Power World on Game Pass. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They'll be followed by Power World on January 19th, tomorrow. Go Mecha Ball on January 25th, and Brotato on January 30th. Next month's Game Pass editions will begin with Persona 3 Reload uh, on February 2nd, and Anuch- Anuchard on February 6th. Cool. Hitman World of Assassination will leave Game Pass on January 31st. If you need more. I'll link it to you. Yeah, apparently, apparently, Ferret's got a lot of friends that are planning on playing it. I'm, I'm a, so, so the 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 Power World thing is like, we've actually got an article coming up after this one, so we'll talk about it then. Frostpunk two gameplay, um, and Game Pass day one release revealed. The city survival game will debut on PC ahead of its console release. 11-Bit Studios has released the first gameplay trailer of Frostpunk 2 and confirmed plans to launch the title on Game Pass. Frostpunk 2 will be released for PC in the first half of 2024 and will be available with PC Game Pass at launch. It will also be available on Game Pass for console when it hits Xbox Series X and S at a later date. The game is coming to PS5 too. Are you listening? Stuart? Stewie? The great storm wiped the world clean. Let's take it back. But how? I'm so hungry. Stuart will Minimal choose time. our path. Stuart, build us a better home. A home for everyone. Bonkers, dude. Stuart. Death sauce like and so bonk. Many things. Death sauce bonk. People. Are starving. Can't win if you don't play. Get them in there. Mouths to feed. The traitors like animals left to suffocate. We need a place to work. Who else will feed our families? Stuart, this smaller will kill her. Stuart! Who do I still owe? Can we all receive True, I still owe you one, right? Hospitals are not a do place I, for Do I still owe you one? Do I still owe sheep one? I can't remember all I can Stuart, hear your people! We want a say in how we run the city. Did I give you The time of tyranny has ended. Our delegates will make sure of that. I got you. Yes, vote. I think I still owe sheep. I think I still owe sheep. Oh, nice, True. I think I owe soup, and I think I owe maybe vault one. Did you hear that? The city. That's me too. The city was not. Word up. They'll probably show more of that today at the developer direct stuff, more than likely. Nice ferret. Uh, discover a city survival game set 30 years after an apocalyptic blizzard ravaged Earth, transforming our world into a harsh, icy wasteland. Reads a production description. Uh, in Frostpunk 2, you must face a new deadly threat that appears on the horizon, human nature, and its unsatiated thirst for power. 11-Bit Studios build the original Frostpunk as the first society survival game, released for PC in 2018, and for consoles the following year, challenges players to manage the citizens and infrastructure of the laid, uh, last city on Earth. It was well received by critics, earning scores of 87 on PS4 and 84 on Xbox One and PC on a review aggregate site, Metacritic. Mm-hmm. Earlier today, Microsoft announced the next wave of titles coming to Xbox Game Pass for console, PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming, uh, which we just talked about. And now, time for Power World. Nice. Yeah, so um dude, we've been we've been waiting for this game for quite some time. It's it's releasing in early access. We were talking about this a little bit earlier today. We've been talking about it for, you know, like pretty consistently for about a week now too cuz the the release date's been upon us. But uh, a lot of community members are excited about this. I've been excited about this game for a long time. I think this could be a really cool game for us to play together. Um 
Yeah, that's cool. True. Yeah. Um, you know, I know Ferret is excited. Uh, Pinky's excited. Ferret's got a lot of other friendos. Um, not you know as good of friends as us, of course, but other friends, if you will, you know, that are excited about playing the game. <laughs> so, um, this is uh something that <laughs> you know, I I uh. I think that this is what the way I'm going to approach this is the game releases before I even start streaming tomorrow. So my plan was to just keep playing um, Fallout New Vegas for a while longer and try to get through the game. But uh, I want to wait and see what people are saying about this game tomorrow after it's in, uh, early access has hit. So it, this is one of those situations where uh, with it being early access, it, we know that it has the potential to still need some bake-in time, maybe not be totally fleshed out. You know, it could it could be a little bit rough on the around the edges and stuff uh, on release, and that's what early access is quite often for games. But um, hopefully, it will be good. And if it if if it's if the reviews already tomorrow morning, by the time we're like finished with the news and everything, are good, we'll probably just go ahead and yoink this and start playing it. Um, so if anybody else is interested, you know, like, I guess that this is a potential thing for us to start playing over the weekend. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, but this is like a tentative kind of play it by ear situation here. I've been very interested in this in a long time. It looks like it could be a lot of fun. I would love it. It, you know, gives us the poten potential for something to do together as a community. And I'm always looking for more things like that to do. Um, but Again, it's it's also it's also got the potential for a um, kind of wait and play later as well. If it seems like it's needing a little bit more bake in time, so we'll just we'll see how it goes. Okay, um, so Pal World's release date, gameplay, trailer, and story. Imagine a world where you gather resources, build bases, catch adorable creatures, a la Pokemon, and then eat them. <laughs> Sorry. Now imagine equipping them with guns and making them work in factories. If that sounds interesting to you, then this game is for you. Here are the details for Pal World, including its release date, gameplay, and story. All right, let's go. <laughs> oh, wait, evil dude. <laughs> Uh, it will enter early access tomorrow, available on PC. Um, <clears throat> can be added to your wishlist on Steam. I'll pull it up for, in a second and give you the link. Also arrives on Game Pass on the same day it goes live on Steam, okay? Um, gameplay, third-person open-world survival sandbox game. Most games in this genre, the ga uh, player's main goal is to survive. Do so by gathering resources such as trees, rocks, and then building a shelter with them. Players must also gather food by means of farming, fishing, or hunting. Although this has a downside, but we'll get to later. Exploration is also a key component of the game. As the world has dungeons ripe for exploring, you can even build factories to mass-produce items that you might need. Player can do all of these things, but if they don't have, but, but they don't have to do it alone. As the game is in early access, it will continue to receive updates with a roadmap coming soon. Pals, cute and adorable monsters, roam the land freely. 
players can capture these pals, raise them just like in Pokemon. Unlike in Pokemon, however, you can do way, way more with your pals. When building, farming, or fighting, pals will become your best friend. Rather than doing all of these things alone, pals will uh, be able to help you with various asks. Making it almost automated. Factories can be fully manned by pals, so production will always continue as long as you feed them. The same goes for uh, construction. In fact, the game encourages you to do it. As the Steam uh, store page says, don't worry, labor laws won't be applied to pals. <laughs> the latest trailer even shows one of the pals using a minigun. Main source of conflict in the game is poachers. People who hunt down pals for food or capture the rare ones for money. It is your job to protect the pals, take down the poachers. Alternatively, you can also hunt down pals for food or capture the rare protected ones. Pa uh, Pal World has online multiplayer as well, so you can do all these things with a friend, trade pals with them, or fight them for their pals and resources. Up to eight players can play together in Pal World, so grab your friends and have some fun. They did mention, however, that PvP will not be part of the game during its initial release. It will arrive in a future update. However, once the developers have figured out what kind of PvP will fit the Pal World's gameplay the most. Here's the thing that I want to see. Crossplay. Well, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, so so I think what it is, so it's, it's all PC. So it's not like you're playing... Um, I think that's what this is going to be. I don't think it's like Xbox... I think it's just PC. I think it's just uh, Game Pass. PC Game Pass. I don't think it's going to be Xbox. Um, it doesn't say specifically here. Let me pull something up real quick. Uh, so I, I think it's it's uh, whether you're playing it on uh, Game Pass or Steam. I don't think it's going to. Yeah, I think it's just going to be PC Game Pass. I'll, I'll Let's verify that though. Um, Xbox and PC Game Pass. It is saying it's on both. Power World's crossplay and cross-platform capabilities are currently zero. There are plans to change that in the future. Um, so it does look like it's hitting um, the Xbox console as well. So if you're a PC player and want to catch, uh, play together with console players, it's not being supported at launch. But they are planning on incorporating this later. How world support crossplay between Xbox and Steam? Um, not at launch, working to make this a possibility as soon as possible. Also means PC Game Pass cannot play with Steam until crossplay is added. So those who get the game at launch will be limited to playing with those on the same platform. But it does seem like correcting this is a high priority for the developer pocket pair. However, there is currently no timeline on how long this will take to correct. No. That's exactly what they're saying right now, True. You cannot play. You can, Steam can only play with Steam. PC Game Pass can only play with PC Game Pass. And Xbox players can only play with Xbox players on release. This means PC Game Pass, Game Pass cannot play with Steam until crossplay is added. Yeah. So there, uh, it does seem like they're trying to get this worked out pretty quick, but uh, initially on release, it, it's you're only going to be able to play with people that are on the same platform. Yeah. So hopefully they'll get that worked out pretty quick, but it was good to get that figured out. I just thought it was only going to be PC too. So apparently... Um, God. They've already got it. Uh, the console version worked out also, which is dope <clears throat> um, and good. But 
they do need to get this cross play, uh, cross platform stuff figured out. So, um, I'll just put this in here. So, um, here's the other thing I wanted to talk about. So with this game, that is unfortunate, but you know, at least they do have an aim at trying to get that fleshed out and figured out. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll happen quick. The, uh, what I want to see with this game is I want to see, and it, it, who knows, it might be like this on release. It might not. And if it's not like this on release, I want to see it evolve into having this kind of mechanic. I want to see them have different pals with different stats for doing different things for you. You know, like when they're talking about pals can help you run a factory, pals can help you with building things, <clears throat> pals can help you with fighting. You know, I want to see all pals have different stat lines, you know, and it would be cool for all the pals to like, like, you know, one species of pal is supposed to be better at building, you know, but they have a, a window or a threshold of a minimum and a maximum within a, that building like stat line, you know what I mean? So they're, they, they might not be able to be maxed on it, you know, but they could be very good at it, but there's still going to be a range of what very good would be, you know what I mean? So say there's like a zero to 100, you know what I mean? Rating and you're going after some kind of like woodland creature that's good at making, you know, building things, right. Or a woodland pal that's good at building things, but they're not the best pal in the game at building things, but they're still very good. So their threshold would be, you know, anywhere from 70 to 85. So maybe you want to keep trying to catch those kinds of pals until you get one that does have like an 83 or an 84 or an 85 rather than a 70. You know what I mean? So it gives you a reason to keep hunting these different pals down. Get one that's good at you know, like cooking, you know what I mean? If that's a thing in the game, one that's good at, you know, building one that's, you know, the ones that are good at factory stuff, um, the different kinds of fighting styles too. That would be sick. You know, get ones that are good at like melee fighting ones that are good at different kinds of, um, you know, what different kinds of melee, you know, is there and, and, you know, is, are there going to be different melee you know, that they, they um, could be like unarmed. There could be, um, you know, different kinds of weapons they could use. Then there could be um, even, you know, ranged attack weapons, whether it be like bow or guns and different kinds of bows and guns and stuff like that, 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 you know, maybe you could equip them with that they would be better or worse with things. That's the kind of thing I would like to see this game really flesh out. That way it gives you more of a reason to uh, grind and uh, go after different kinds of pals and uh, keep trying to catch specific pals to give so you're getting the best of what you need. You know what I mean? Um, if they don't do that, I feel like that's a huge, huge, huge miss. I feel like that's a huge miss if they don't do that. But we'll see tomorrow. <laughs> And maybe even like, um, maybe even the, 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 the more rare, you know, pals that could be caught, you know, they're, they're very hard to catch, very rare, but they might even be able to break the threshold, you know, rarely. Maybe if you get really lucky, they can break that, that threshold of the 100, you know, maybe go a little bit above that or something. And it's like, Oh my God, it's like almost like getting a shiny or something. You know what I mean? where they would be just extraordinarily good at doing certain things, you know, that would be, that would be so dope, man. Hmm. Could always suggest that to him. Yeah. Could. Yep. I just need to, you know, I just need to become a video game consultant is all it is. 
I just need to. (laughs) 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 All right. Uh, So Ubisoft just introduced a game that came out six years ago. Good ideas. Yeah, I, I think I, I think they're pretty good. I'm glad you think so. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that, Soup. I actually heard it's coming out. It put a zero behind that three. That's what I heard. And each part is going to sell for a triple A, over triple A price. So you have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Um, Ubisoft just introduced a game that came out six years ago. What is this, dude? Recently, Ubi uploaded a trailer to YouTube and posted some teasers on Twitter announcing playtests for a new game, Battle Core Arena. With a short clip, Ubi showcased a bizarre-looking game in which the players assume control of mechanized balls that fire explosive lasers at each other while taking advantage of gravity and high-octane movement mechanics to bounce around the screen. I'm as confused as you are. <laughs> what is Battlecore Arena? There's almost no information online about Battlecore Arena, save for the fact that it was developed by Cosmic Ray Studio, a French studio with almost no online profile, and it was released back in 2017. It debuted on Steam more than six years ago, and the Steam database profile for the game shows that it underwent a cleansing in 2022. This kind of cleansing? With most of the game's assets and information being stripped from the platform, the last update for the game was in May of 2023, but if you try searching for it now, you'll see that there's nothing there. Now, as 2024 kicks off, Ubi has announced the impending arrival of the exact same game. It's identical. Promotional art for the original Battlecore Arena is the same as the graphics shown in the new trailer. Interesting. This is weird, dude. <laughs> Make a wish Rocket League, dude. Uh, strangely, the Twitter profile for the game posted a message inviting players to take part in the uh, technical test that runs from the 1st to the 5th of February. Profile's first post since February of 2020. Time of writing, the profile boasts just 153 followers. Bizarrely enough, the introduction to Battlecore Arena, a free-to-play arena-based shooter, was made on Ubi's premier Twitter profile with 10.6 million followers. A free-to-play competitive platform shooter where gravity mastery is the key to victory. Use your trusted weapons and abilities to eject your opponents out of the arena in style. Glory awaits you. Take the plunge. Reach out to Ubi to see if we can glean a little more info on this new game. At present, we can only assume that Ubi quietly acquired the game years ago and has been working on it in the background since. Interesting. That's weird. That's kind of odd, man. All right. Oh, dude. Uh here thanks ferret appreciate this buddy um so this is from ferret uh this is ridiculous this is ridiculous if you guys what the crappers that's really weird okay we'll just stick with it right here i guess um take two and remedy in a trademark dispute over the r logo it claims It resembles Rockstar Games. Are you flipping kidding me? (laughs) Dude, that's exactly what this is. Yo, Soup, you nailed it, dude. You nailed it. No, it's my letter R. Nuh-uh. No, nobody else can have it. It's a, it's my R. Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't even look, it doesn't even look remotely the same. The Remedy's even, it, like, it's like a, a, you know, it's like a broken mirror kind of R, you know, and then, um, or like a fractured uh, letter R. And then it even says Remedy below it. Whereas Rockstars is entirely different. It's like italic, you know, 
the uh it's got a star on it and everything like what it, that's so stupid dude uh take two interactive has entered a trademark dispute with remedy entertainment and says the latter's logo resembles the r of rockstar games remedy revealed this logo in a blog post back in april last year the bullet and the letter R in the old logo represented the era of Max Payne, but the remedy of, of now is much bigger than a single game. We have a whole portfolio of games, new and old, it wrote at the time. It was a time to update and redefine our visual identity to bring more consistency, showcase our evolution over the years, and better express our vision of today's remedy. The new logo is a stylized R, but as reported by Respawn First, this has been opposed by Take-Two as there exists a likelihood of confusion on the part of the public. <laughs> no. No, absolutely not. Nope. This is cringy, dude. Two trademark claims for variations of the logo were filed in May, shortly after the logo was revealed. Uh, both claims were opposed by Take Two as of September last year. Both claims remain opposed. Remedy Entertainment and Take Two Interactive are in a trademark dispute over Remedy's logo. Um, Eurogamer has contacted Remedy for more information. Take Two has been involved in a number of trademark and copyright claims in the last couple of years against various businesses and products. As reported by Eurogamer, it takes uh, two developer. Hayes Light was hit by a trademark claim in 2021 for the game's name. The developer abandoned its own trademark. How stupid is this, dude? Actually insane. So dumb. All right. And last but not least, um, I was made aware of this yesterday afternoon, or uh, Tuesday afternoon, excuse me, Tuesday afternoon um, by our buddy Tenwin. Um, if you guys don't know what Foam Stars is, uh, yeah, these guys have nothing better to do. Exactly. Yeah. You see that logo, you know, it's going to be a good game. It, as long as it's a red dead game or midnight club or bully or anything else that they should be working on other than what they actually are working on. <laughs> yeah. PlayStation exclusive. Thank God it doesn't need to be on any other platform. Um, this is like, I mean, I, I remember the first time I saw this game, I was like, this looks disgusting. You know, this is like a wannabe Splatoon game. This looks horrible. And, um, so funny enough with Tim Wynn brought, but you know, he's like, did you hear the news about the foam stars game? And I was like, are they, are they canceling it? But, you know, <laughs> But um, apparently it's a, an issue of them using a lot of AI to develop this game. And um, so a shout out to our buddy Tenwin. I appreciate it, man. And uh, we'll dive in here. Actually, what Tenwin sent me was this, and we'll read this next. But I found this article this morning to go along with it. So let's take a look at this first. The latest Foam Stars AI art news caused Square Enix to be the focus of criticism. Look, man, Square Enix is becoming a disgusting developer, man, and publisher. Square Enix, a big name in video games, has taken a big step with its new PlayStation game, Foam Stars. This game is a lot like the popular Splatoon, um, and it's special because it uses AI, or artificial intelligence, to help make some of its art. This is a pretty new thing in video games. It shows how technology is becoming a big part of making games. Kasuke uh, Okitani, who leads the Foam Stars team, talked to VGC, a gaming news site, and said that the game will have some AI-created art. He also made sure to say that most of the game was made by people, not computers. Many people in the industry still didn't like the Foamstars AI art news. Foamstars will be available to play on PlayStation Plus starting February 6th. Um, Mid Journey powers Foamstars AI art. Square Enix used a tool called Mid Journey for the Foamstars AI art. Mid Journey can turn words into pictures. They used it to make cool abstract pictures for the music in the game. Square Enix said, In this instance, we experimented with Midjourney using simple prompts to produce abstract images. We loved what was created and used them in the final album covers. Players will see in the game. Everything else was created entirely by our development team, he said in his interview with Video Games Chronicle. Square isn't just trying AI for fun. They have big plans for it. Earlier this year, the company company's president, Taka, Takashi uh, Kir, is it Kiryu? wrote a letter saying that they want to use AI a lot in making and selling games. He said AI could help them make games better and faster and also do better in advertising. In the future, they hope to use AI to make totally new kinds of games and content. AI in games isn't just a Square Enix thing. Other big games and uh, names in gaming like Xbox 
are also working with AI. For example, Xbox is using AI to make characters and stories in games. But not everyone likes this idea. Some voice actors didn't like that a game called The Finals used computer voices instead of human ones. Still, many players seem to enjoy these AI-powered games. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my sentiments in a moment. Let me finish reading this. AI in games is exciting but controversial. Using AI in games like Foamstars brings up some tough questions. Some tools like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, which make AI art, are being sued. Artists say these tools use their art without permission to train the AI. Yep. Also, people worry that using more AI might mean fewer jobs for humans in the gaming industry. This debate about AI isn't just in gaming. Famous movie director Tim Burton said AI art was disturbing in 2023. Also, Wizards of the Coast, who make the card game Magic, the Gathering had to say sorry for wrongly claiming they didn't use AI in some of their artwork. Even with all the debate, AI is becoming more common in games and other creative areas. With the latest Foamstar AI art news, we might just be seeing the start of a big change in how games are made. There's no doubt about that. It's a mix of excitement and concern as we watch how AI will shape the future of, of entertainment. I'm going to go straight back to the same sentiment that I've expressed um, since AI really, you know, became a prominent piece of, of uh, technology for us to use in um, video game development and a, a big point of discussion for us here in the industry. It's inevitable that you know we evolve with technology things like this were going to happen but it needs to be done in a, a an ethical way and when uh, my sentiments the entire time about ai being used for video game development have been this you have to first bring in people to create a, a, a large data set of unique assets for each individual project. You cannot be using AI tools to just reach out to grab data from any and everywhere where you don't have licenses for, you haven't been given authority to use. You know, it that's plagiarism. It's plagiarism. People's uh, unique content and uh, works are being um, used without their consent and they're not being compensated for that and that's not acceptable so the way the only way that this can be done in an acceptable manner is by unique assets being created on all fronts of any way in which ai is going to be used for any project for game development these assets have to have a large data set of uniquely created assets first and foremost. Then, if they want to use AI to take that specific set of data to contort it, change it, mesh it, mash it up, change it into all kinds of different stuff for the project moving forward, by all means, go for it. But using it to go out there and just pull in things that you don't have the right to use that is other people's unique you know content that you haven't been given authority to utilize is not acceptable and this is the problem giant big giant companies like Microsoft and Square Enix and EA and you know I mean the list goes on and on and on they don't care how pissed we get so unless we keep causing a fuss about this and keep calling them out about the misuse of the AI in their, their development processes, you know, they're just going to keep doing it. We have to keep staying on their asses about it. Um, it's disgusting. It's not acceptable. And it's, it's, uh, you know, the concern that a lot of people have about the, the, the ways it is being unethically utilized and misused for project development, for game development in the industry is is absolutely, you know what I mean? It, they, they have every right to be concerned because th it, it is concerning. And um, again, there are ways in which it could be used correctly and ethically, but these companies aren't doing it that way. It is absolutely stealing. It is absolutely stealing. So... Um, 
we have to continue to call out these uh, studios for doing this kind of thing. You don't support these games that you know have been developed on these kinds of processes where they they've been uh, developing AI um, assets, not on in-house. Uh, assets that have, were made strictly for those projects, you know, like phone, nobody should be playing this game. Nobody, no, absolutely nobody. Nobody should be supporting this flipping game at all. You know, um, this is this is something that is not acceptable, and we have to take a stand against this. You know, it's there are good ways that it, I I think that you know technology advancement is unavoidable. There are ways in which anytime we have technology advancement, you know, there are very good things about it. There are ways in which it can be used um, for good. And there are always ways in which it'll be used for bad as well. And um, I think that this whole, you know, a lot of the, these different AI uh, incorporations, as far as game development goes, they're, the capacity for more efficient, more you know, game development, the, the vastness of what can be created, the, the, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of wild to think about. And I think it can be a good thing if it's used correctly, but that's the problem. Most of these corporations aren't using it the right way. And it is very, very concerning. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is very, very concerning. So um, don't support these games, dude. These games that you know are not using AI the right way, do not support these games, please, man. This is not healthy. It is not good for us as consumers and gaming enthusiasts at all. You cannot support these titles. So the last thing is, is actually, this is like what Tenwin brought up to me. Um, Tuesday, which led me into trying to find uh, an article for us to cover, which was, this is when the news broke. Um, Square Enix confirming its upcoming PlayStation shooter, uh, Foam Stars, contains AI-generated art. And you can see there's a lot of outrage, you know. And just like that, I lost all respect for Square Enix. Dude, I, I've lost respect for Square Enix a long time ago. But this is just kind of like a cherry on top. I can't imagine anybody even being excited for this game, but... Definitely dead on arrival now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, at least there are a lot of people that are, are on the same front here. You know, there are a lot of people that have the same notion. AI is not good. It, it really isn't. It, it, unless it's being utilized the right way, which these major companies are not. They're not using it the right way. That's the news, my dudes. That's what we got. It's time to play some games. And we got the Xbox Developer Direct Showcase Popping off at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, which is my time, stream time, and um, a noon of Pacific. Dude, we got the Xbox Developer Direct. We're going to be watching that. That pops off in five and a half hours. So we got about five hours of gameplay. Yep, Xbox Direct Showcase. Uh-huh. Here, I'll link it to you. Developer Direct. We're watching this today. I've been announcing this for roughly uh, a week. Five, five hours of sleep. <laughs> so uh, we'll be watching all that. Yep, yep. Um, so get ready. Get you some rest. Take a little nap, buddy. Take a little nap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're watching that today. So um, everybody get ready for that. We're going to... Um, you know, I changed up our scenes a little bit. I don't know if you guys notice. But uh, the scenes have changed just a little bit. You guys notice it all? Let me know if you can you can you can pick out what's different. You know, there, we got a lot of different. There's just minor differences. You know, let me know. Let me know if you notice it. Um. So, uh, it feels good to be back, dude. It's always good to be back after the uh, the day off. You know. Um. Nope. Nice try though. <laughs> Those have always been there. Um. So, 
You guys rock. Great news segment. Appreciate it. It's, uh, it's uh, always good to be back after the day off, and uh, we're going to go play some games and then get ready for the Xbox Direct Showcase to end of the day on, okay? So, um, happy Thursday. I hope everybody's week's been going well. Hope you had a great day yesterday. We're going to have a great day today. we got a lot of good content coming up uh, for the rest of the day with gameplay and the uh, showcase happening later with Xbox. And uh, I don't know if anybody's been able to hang out today. You're not familiar with what we do this is how we start all of our streams, six days a week. No Wednesday streams. Wednesdays are always our day off, but we always start off with video gaming news. We try to address a lot of the uh, things that are happening in the industry, uh, current events, um, you know, things that are important to stay current on with what's happening in video games and just try to promote a healthier industry for us as uh, lovers of video games, game, video gaming enthusiasts and uh us as the consumers of of the video gaming industry you know um <clears throat> so it, we've got uh after that we always like we're about to do right now go slide into playing video games for the rest of the day and just have a lot of fun laughing and and uh getting down on on an, enjoying the world that we love so much so um all of our previous content, video gaming news segments, game playthroughs, funny clips and highlights, all that stuff. I do my very best to make sure that stuff's on the uh, highlighted out into playlists on the Twitch channel as well as on the YouTube channel. And uh, you can go check out all the previous stuff we've done. But uh, we're always looking for more people to come be a part of what we do when we're live. We've got an amazing community here full of people that uh, we, you know, are invested in taking care of one another. Um you know, being a legitimate community of, of caring individuals that uh, just spread good vibes and, uh, you know, are welcoming, inclusive, um, and just enjoy video games together, you know, be void of toxicity and negativity and just civil about things. So if, uh, if you can dig that, man, then come be a part of what we do when we're live, man. We're always looking for more good peoples to be a part of this community, this community. Okay. So um, other than that, I guess just, uh, Stay healthy, stay safe, be kind to one another. And uh, I'm going to run us an outro real quick to finish up this news segment. But as soon as it's uh, finished running, then uh, we will start getting prepared for playing video games. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.